Ancient Footprints, How Humans Evolved Discover the fascinating journey of human evolution, from early hominins like Australopithecus afarensis to the emergence of Homo sapiens. This exploration reveals how our ancient ancestors adapted, evolved, and innovated, shaping the path that led to modern humanity. Join us as we trace our evolutionary roots. Part 1, Early Hominins and Australopithecus Australopithecus afarensis is one of the most pivotal species in understanding human evolution. This species, living around 4 to 3 million years ago, Ma, in regions of Ethiopia and Tanzania, has provided significant insight into early hominin behavior and morphology. The most famous specimen, known as Lucy, was discovered in the Afar region of Ethiopia and dates back to around 3.2 Ma. Lucy's skeleton, approximately 40% complete, offers a unique glimpse into the structure and lifestyle of early hominins. Australopithecus afarensis exhibited both ape-like and human-like traits. They were small-bodied, averaging about 1 to 1.2 meters in height, and walked upright, as evidenced by the shape of their pelvis and lower limb bones. However, their curved fingers and toes suggest they retained some climbing abilities, indicating a dual adaptation to both terrestrial and arboreal environments. This blend of traits highlights the transitional nature of Australopithecus afarensis in the evolutionary path from tree-dwelling ancestors to fully bipedal hominins. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for their bipedalism comes from the Litoli footprints in Tanzania. Discovered by Mary Leakey and her team in 1978, these footprints date to about 3.5 ma and were preserved in volcanic ash. The footprints show a clear arch and toe alignment, similar to modern human footprints, further confirming that Australopithecus afarensis walked upright. In addition to Lucy, numerous other fossils have been found that provide a broader understanding of this species. These include cranial remains, which reveal that while their brains were small, roughly one-third the size of modern human brains, their chewing teeth were relatively large, indicating a diet that included tough plant materials. The projecting face and strong jaw muscles also suggest a powerful bite, necessary for processing a variety of foods. Recent discoveries have introduced other species within the Australopithecus genus, such as Australopithecus barelgazali from Chad and Australopithecus garhai from Ethiopia. Australopithecus barelgazali, known from a few fossil fragments, adds geographic diversity to our understanding of early hominins, showing that these species were more widespread across Africa than previously thought. However, there is still debate about the distinctiveness of these species compared to Australopithecus afarensis. Some researchers argue that the differences are not significant enough to warrant separate species, while others believe they represent distinct evolutionary lineages. Australopithecus garhai, discovered in the middle Awash region of Ethiopia, dates to around 2.5 ma and is notable for its association with some of the earliest known stone tools. These tools suggest that Australopithecus garhai may have had a more sophisticated behavioral repertoire than previously assumed for early hominins. The discovery of cut marks on animal bones near the fossils indicates that they were using tools to process meat, pointing to an important dietary shift that likely had significant evolutionary implications. These various species within the Australopithecus genus collectively highlight the diversity and adaptability of early hominins. They lived in a range of environments, from wooded areas to open savannas, and their physical adaptations reflect their ability to exploit different ecological niches. This adaptability was crucial for survival in the dynamic and changing environments of ancient Africa. Part 2 Australopithecus africanus and early discoveries. Australopithecus africanus holds a significant place in paleoanthropology as one of the earliest discovered and most well-studied hominins. The species was first identified in 1924 by Raymond Dard, who described the juvenile-type specimen, known as the Tong Child, from the Tong site in South Africa. This discovery was revolutionary as it provided the first evidence that early human ancestors lived in Africa, challenging the prevailing notion that human evolution occurred in Europe or Asia. 
The Tong child is estimated to be about 2.8 million years old. This young individual skull exhibited both ape-like and human-like characteristics, such as a small brain case and large, projecting face combined with human-like dental structures and evidence of bipedalism. Dart's interpretation of these features as indicating a transitional form between apes and humans was initially met with skepticism but eventually gained widespread acceptance as more fossils were discovered. Subsequent discoveries at the South African sites of Sturkfontein and Makupunshut provided more substantial samples of Australopithecus africanus. These fossils, dating from approximately 3 to 2 million years ago, include adult individuals that offer a more comprehensive view of the species' morphology. Australopithecus africanus differed in numerous details from its close relative, Australopithecus afarensis, which lived in East Africa. One significant difference is in cranial capacity. Australopithecus africanus had a slightly larger brain than Australopithecus afarensis, although it was still much smaller than that of modern humans. This increase in brain size suggests a trend towards greater cognitive abilities and more complex behaviors. The shape of the brain case also indicates that certain areas of the brain, such as those involved in speech and complex motor functions, were beginning to expand. Another notable feature of Australopithecus africanus is its dental and facial morphology. The species had large molars and premolars, adapted for chewing tough plant materials, and a relatively broad face with a pronounced jaw. These traits indicate a diet that likely included a significant amount of fibrous vegetation, similar to that of Australopithecus afarensis. However, the presence of stone tools in some contexts suggests that Australopithecus africanus may have also incorporated meat into its diet, either through scavenging or hunting small animals. The postcranial skeleton of Australopithecus africanus provides further evidence of their bipedalism. The structure of the pelvis, femur, and lower spine is consistent with upright walking, although some features suggest they still retain some climbing abilities. This combination of traits reflects a transitional stage in human evolution, where hominins were becoming increasingly adapted to life on the ground but had not yet fully abandoned their arboreal heritage. The discovery and study of Australopithecus africanus have had profound implications for our understanding of human evolution. It confirmed that early hominins were already walking upright millions of years ago and provided crucial evidence supporting the African origin of human ancestors. The fossils from Sturkfontein and Makupunshut, along with those from Tong, have helped to build a detailed picture of the morphology, behavior, and ecology of early hominins. Australopithecus africanus is often described as a gracile australopithecine, meaning it had a lighter build compared to the robust australopithecines like Paranthropus. This distinction is important for understanding the diversity of early hominins and their different evolutionary strategies. The gracile australopithecines, including both Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus, are thought to represent more generalized forms that were capable of exploiting a variety of food sources and environments. In summary, Australopithecus africanus plays a crucial role in the study of human evolution. Its discovery marked a significant milestone in paleoanthropology, providing the first clear evidence of early human ancestors in Africa. The species' combination of ape-like and human-like traits highlights the transitional nature of early hominins, reflecting their adaptation to both arboreal and terrestrial environments. The continued study of Australopithecus africanus fossils from South Africa has enriched our understanding of the evolutionary path that led to modern humans, emphasizing the complexity and diversity of our ancient relatives. Part 3, Gracile vs. Robust Australopithecines The distinction between gracile and robust Australopithecines provides essential insights into the diversity and adaptive strategies of early hominins. Gracile Australopithecines, such as Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus, are characterized by their relatively lighter build and more generalized morphology. In contrast, the robust Australopithecines, 
classified under the genus Paranthropus, exhibit a range of specialized adaptations for heavy chewing and a more substantial skeletal structure. Paranthropus robustus is one of the best-known robust australopithecines, found primarily in South African sites such as Swartkrans and Cromdry. This species lived between approximately 1.9 and 1.5 ma and is characterized by its robust cranial features, including a large sagittal crest, broad cheekbones, and massive jaw muscles. These features are functionally linked to their diet, which likely included hard and fibrous plant materials. The large molars and premolars of Paranthropus robusta suggest that they relied heavily on their powerful chewing capabilities to process tough vegetation. The adaptations seen in Paranthropus robustus indicate a significant degree of specialization. The robust cranial morphology and large chewing teeth contrast sharply with the more gracile features of Australopithecus africanus. This divergence in physical traits reflects different ecological niches and dietary strategies. While gracile australopithecines may have had a more varied diet, including both plant and animal foods, robust australopithecines appear to have specialized in consuming tough, low-quality vegetation. Paranthropus boise, another robust australopithecine, was first discovered by Mary and Louis Leakey at Oldaway Gorge in Tanzania in 1959. This species, sometimes referred to as hyperrobust, lived from approximately 2.3 to 1.4 ma and exhibited even more extreme adaptations for heavy chewing than Paranthropus robustus. Paranthropus boise had enormous molars, a large sagittal crest, and a highly robust mandible. These features indicate a diet that was heavily reliant on hard and fibrous plant materials, requiring significant chewing power. The geographic range of Paranthropus boise extended beyond Tanzania to other parts of East Africa, including Kenya and Ethiopia. This widespread distribution suggests that Paranthropus boise was highly successful in its ecological niche. The adaptations of Paranthropus boise highlight the diversity of evolutionary paths taken by early hominins and emphasize the role of dietary specialization in shaping hominin morphology. Paranthropus ethiopicus, a less well-known robust australopithecine, is represented by more fragmentary fossils dating from 2.7 to 2.3 ma in the Turkana Basin. The most famous specimen, the black skull, exhibits a mix of primitive and derived traits. It has a robust cranial structure similar to other Paranthropus species but retains some primitive features seen in earlier hominins. This combination of traits suggests that Paranthropus ethiopicus represents an early stage in the evolution of the robust Australopithecines. The study of robust Australopithecines, including Paranthropus robustus, Paranthropus boise, and Paranthropus ethiopicus, has provided critical insights into the adaptive strategies of early hominins. These species highlight the importance of dietary specialization in hominin evolution and demonstrate the diverse ways in which early humans adapted to their environments. The robust adaptations seen in these species reflect their ability to exploit specific ecological niches, which may have allowed them to coexist with other hominins by reducing direct competition for resources. The distinction between gracile and robust australopithecines also underscores the complexity of human evolution. Rather than a linear progression, human evolution is characterized by a branching pattern, with different species evolving distinct adaptations to their environments. This diversity is a testament to the adaptive flexibility of early hominins and their ability to thrive in a variety of ecological contexts. In conclusion, the gracile and robust australopithecines represent two different adaptive strategies within the broader framework of early hominin evolution. Gracile species, such as Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus, exhibited a more generalized morphology, allowing them to exploit a range of dietary resources. In contrast, robust species, such as Paranthropus robustus and Paranthropus boise, developed specialized adaptations for heavy chewing, reflecting a focus on tough plant materials. 
The study of these diverse forms provides valuable insights into the evolutionary processes that shaped the early stages of human history, highlighting the complexity and richness of our ancient lineage. Part 4. The Advent of Stone Tools The advent of stone tools marks a significant milestone in human evolution, representing the dawn of technological innovation among early hominins. The earliest stone tools, known as Oldowan tools, appeared between 2.6 and 2 ma and are attributed to early members of the genus Homo. These tools provide the first clear evidence of cultural practices and cognitive abilities beyond what is observed in non-human primates. Oldowan tools are simple, often created by striking one stone against another to produce sharp-edged flakes. The resulting tools were used for various purposes, including cutting, scraping, and hammering. The simplicity of these tools belies their importance, as they allowed early hominins to access new food sources and perform tasks that would have been difficult or impossible with bare hands alone. The appearance of Oldowan tools coincides with significant changes in hominin behavior and ecology. The ability to create and use tools likely facilitated the exploitation of a broader range of food resources, including meat. Cut marks on animal bones from Oldowan sites indicate that early toolmakers were using their tools to process animal carcasses, suggesting an increased reliance on meat in their diet. This dietary shift would have provided important nutritional benefits, such as higher protein and fat intake, supporting brain growth and development. The use of stone tools also had implications for social behavior and cooperation among early hominins. The creation of tools likely required some degree of planning and foresight, as well as knowledge of suitable raw materials. These cognitive abilities suggest that early toolmakers possessed a level of intelligence and problem-solving skills beyond that of their non-tool-using ancestors. Additionally, the sharing and teaching of toolmaking techniques would have fostered social bonds and cooperation within groups. The study of Oldowan tools and the sites where they are found provides valuable insights into the lifeways of early hominins. Archaeologists analyze the useware patterns on tools to understand how they were used and the tasks they performed. The selection of raw materials and the locations of archaeological sites offer clues about the movements and activities of early toolmakers. These sites, often found near water sources and rich in animal remains, suggest that early hominins strategically selected locations that provided both resources and opportunities for tool use. One of the key challenges in studying early stone tools is associating them with specific hominin species. While Oldowan tools are widely believed to have been made by early members of the genus Homo, such as Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis, definitive associations are difficult to establish. The overlapping timeframes and geographic ranges of multiple hominin species complicate the picture, making it challenging to determine which species were responsible for specific tools. The Oldowan tool industry represents the beginning of the archaeological record, providing the first tangible evidence of human culture. This period, known as the Lower Paleolithic, is characterized by the development and use of stone tools, which laid the foundation for subsequent technological advances. The study of Oldowan tools is a crucial aspect of paleoanthropology, offering a window into the cognitive and cultural evolution of early hominins. The analysis of stone tools extends beyond their functional aspects to include broader questions about hominin behavior and adaptation. For example, researchers study the spatial distribution of tools and sites to infer patterns of movement and resource exploitation. Taphonomy, the study of how organisms decay and become fossilized, helps archaeologists understand the processes that affected the preservation and distribution of tools and animal remains at archaeological sites. The advent of stone tools also had profound implications for the evolutionary trajectory of early hominins. The ability to create and use tools likely provided a selective advantage, contributing to the survival and success of tool-using species. The increased dietary flexibility and nutritional benefits associated with tool use would have supported larger brain sizes and more complex social behaviors, setting the stage for further evolutionary developments.
In summary, the advent of stone tools represents a pivotal moment in human evolution, marking the beginning of technological innovation and cultural practices among early hominins. The Olduin tool industry, characterized by simple flaked stone tools, facilitated new ways of accessing and processing food, supporting changes in diet, behavior, and cognition. The study of these tools provides crucial insights into the lifeways and adaptations of early members of the genus Homo, highlighting the complex interplay between technology, behavior, and evolution in our ancient ancestors. Part 5, Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis. The genus Homo, which includes modern humans and our closest relatives, is distinguished by several key features, including larger brain sizes, more advanced tool use, and more complex social behaviors. Two of the earliest members of this genus, Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis, provide important insights into the evolution of these traits and the transition from earlier hominins to the lineage leading to Homo sapiens. Homo rudolfensis, known primarily from the Lake Turkana region of Kenya, lived between approximately 2 and 1.6 million years ago, Ma. The most well-known specimen, KNMER 1470, was discovered in 1972 and has been a subject of much debate among paleoanthropologists. This species is characterized by a relatively large brain case, averaging around 750 cubic centimeters, which is larger than that of earlier Australopithecus species. The face of Homo rudolfensis is broad and flat, with large cheekbones and a less pronounced brow ridge compared to later Homo species. One of the key features distinguishing Homo rudolfensis is its more modern postcranial anatomy. While the fossil record for this species is fragmentary, evidence suggests that it had longer legs and a more human-like pelvis compared to Australopithecus. These adaptations indicate a greater efficiency in bipedal locomotion, which would have been advantageous for covering long distances in search of food and resources. Homo habilis, first described from Oldaway Gorge in Tanzania in 1961, is another early member of the genus Homo. This species lived slightly later than Homo rudolfensis, from around 2.4 to 1.6 ma. Homo habilis is characterized by its smaller stature and brain size, which averages around 600 cubic centimeters. Despite its smaller brain, Homo habilis exhibits several advanced features, including a more human-like hand capable of precision grip and tool use. The name habilis, meaning handy, reflects the association of this species with the earliest known stone tools, the Olduin industry. The discovery of these tools alongside Homo habilis fossils suggests that this species was among the first to engage in systematic toolmaking and use. The Olduin tools, consisting of simple flakes and cores, were likely used for a variety of tasks, including cutting meat, scraping hides, and breaking bones to access marrow. Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis provide a fascinating glimpse into the early stages of human evolution. Both species exhibit a combination of primitive and derived traits, reflecting their transitional status between the more ape-like Australopithecines and the more advanced later members of the genus Homo. The differences between these two species highlight the diversity of evolutionary paths taken by early hominins. One of the ongoing debates in paleoanthropology is the relationship between Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. Some researchers argue that the differences between the two are significant enough to warrant separate species status, while others believe they represent variations within a single, highly variable species. This debate is fueled by the fragmentary nature of the fossil record and the overlapping timeframes and geographic ranges of the two species. The study of Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis also sheds light on the social behaviors and ecological adaptations of early Homo. The presence of stone tools and evidence of meat consumption suggest that these species had more complex foraging strategies compared to earlier hominins. This shift in diet would have provided important nutritional benefits, supporting larger brain sizes and more advanced cognitive abilities. In addition to their tool use, the postcranial anatomy of Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis indicates that they were well adapted for bipedal locomotion. The structure of their pelvis, 
femur, and foot bone suggests efficient walking and running capabilities, which would have been essential for survival in the open landscapes of Pleistocene Africa. These adaptations highlight the importance of mobility and endurance in the evolutionary success of early Homo. The discovery and study of Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis have significantly expanded our understanding of human evolution. These species represent key stages in the transition from more primitive hominins to the more advanced members of the genus Homo. Their combination of primitive and derived traits reflects the gradual and mosaic nature of human evolution, where different features evolved at different rates in response to changing environmental pressures. In conclusion, Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis are two of the earliest members of the genus Homo, providing crucial insights into the evolution of our lineage. Their fossils reveal a blend of primitive and advanced traits, highlighting the transitional nature of these species. The association of Homo habilis with the Olduin stone tool industry marks a significant milestone in human technological and cognitive evolution. The study of these early Homo species continues to shed light on the complex processes that shape the development of modern humans, emphasizing the importance of diversity and adaptation in our evolutionary history. Part 6 Early Homo and Olduin Tools The emergence of the genus Homo marks a critical juncture in the evolutionary history of hominins, characterized by significant advancements in tool use, cognitive abilities, and social behaviors. One of the most notable innovations associated with early Homo species is the development of the Olduin tool industry, which represents the earliest known systematic production of stone tools. Olduin tools, named after the Olduway Gorge site in Tanzania where they were first discovered, date back to approximately 2.6 million years ago, Ma. These tools are characterized by their simplicity and efficiency, created by striking one stone against another to produce sharp-edged flakes. The resulting tools were used for a variety of tasks, including cutting, scraping, and pounding, allowing early hominins to access new food sources and perform tasks that would have been difficult or impossible with bare hands alone. The development of Olduin tools is widely believed to be associated with early members of the genus Homo, such as Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. The ability to create and use tools likely provided significant evolutionary advantages, facilitating the exploitation of a broader range of food resources, including meat. The use of tools to butcher animals and process carcasses would have allowed early hominins to access high-quality protein and fat, supporting brain growth and overall health. The cognitive implications of tool use are profound. The creation of stone tools requires a level of planning, foresight, and manual dexterity that is not seen in non-human primates. The ability to conceptualize the final tool form, select appropriate raw materials, and execute the necessary strikes reflects advanced cognitive and motor skills. This technological innovation likely played a crucial role in the evolutionary trajectory of early Homo, supporting the development of more complex behaviors and social structures. The archaeological record of Olduin tools provides valuable insights into the lifeways of early Homo. These tools are often found in association with animal bones, suggesting that early toolmakers were using them to process meat. Cut marks on bones provide direct evidence of butchery activities, indicating that early Homo species were capable of exploiting animal resources through both hunting and scavenging. This dietary shift towards greater meat consumption would have had significant nutritional benefits, contributing to brain expansion and cognitive development. In addition to their functional aspects, Olduin tools offer clues about the social behaviors of early Homo. The production and use of tools likely involved some degree of social learning and cooperation. The sharing of knowledge and skills related to toolmaking would have fostered social bonds and facilitated the transmission of cultural practices across generations. The presence of tools at various sites also suggests that early Homo species were capable of planning and organizing group activities, such as coordinated hunting or food sharing. The study of Olduin tools extends beyond their immediate use to broader questions about hominin behavior and adaptation.
Researchers analyzed the useware patterns on tools to infer their specific functions and the tasks they were used for. The selection of raw materials and the locations of archaeological sites provide insights into the movements and resource exploitation strategies of early toolmakers. These sites, often found near water sources and rich in animal remains, suggest that early Homo species strategically selected locations that offered both resources and opportunities for tool use. The significance of Oldowan tools in human evolution cannot be overstated. They represent the beginning of the archaeological record and the first clear evidence of cultural practices among early hominins. This period, known as the Lower Paleolithic, is characterized by the development and use of stone tools, which laid the foundation for subsequent technological advances. The study of Oldowan tools is a crucial aspect of paleoanthropology, offering a window into the cognitive and cultural evolution of early Homo. The analysis of stone tools also involves broader questions about hominin adaptation and survival. For example, the spatial distribution of tools and sites can reveal patterns of movement and resource use, shedding light on how early Homo species adapted to different environments. Taphonomy, the study of how organisms decay and become fossilized, helps archaeologists understand the processes that affected the preservation and distribution of tools and animal remains at archaeological sites. The emergence of stone tools had profound implications for the evolutionary trajectory of early Homo. The ability to create and use tools likely provided a selective advantage, contributing to the survival and success of tool-using species. The increased dietary flexibility and nutritional benefits associated with tool use would have supported larger brain sizes and more complex social behaviors, setting the stage for further evolutionary developments. In conclusion, the emergence of Oldowan tools represents a pivotal moment in human evolution, marking the beginning of technological innovation and cultural practices among early Homo species. These tools facilitated new ways of accessing and processing food, supporting changes in diet, behavior, and cognition. The study of Oldowan tools provides crucial insights into the lifeways and adaptations of early members of the genus Homo, highlighting the complex interplay between technology, behavior, and evolution in our ancient ancestors. Part 7. Homo erectus and Homo ergaster Homo erectus is one of the most significant species in the study of human evolution, known for its advanced cognitive abilities, sophisticated tool use, and wide geographic distribution. This species, which first appeared around 1.9 million years ago, Ma, and persisted until approximately 250,000 years ago, Ka, represents a major step in the evolutionary trajectory of the genus Homo. Early African specimens of Homo erectus are often classified as Homo ergaster, reflecting slight differences in morphology and regional adaptations. Homo erectus is characterized by several key features that distinguish it from earlier hominins. One of the most notable is its larger brain size, averaging around 900 cubic centimeters, which is significantly larger than that of Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. This increase in brain size is associated with more advanced cognitive abilities, including improved problem-solving skills, greater social complexity, and the development of more sophisticated tools and technologies. The postcranial anatomy of Homo erectus also shows significant advancements. The species exhibited longer legs and a more human-like pelvis, indicating efficient bipedal locomotion. These adaptations would have allowed Homo erectus to cover long distances more effectively, supporting a nomadic lifestyle and the ability to explore and colonize new environments. The Turkanaboy skeleton discovered in Kenya and dated to around 1.6 ma, provides a nearly complete example of an early African Homo erectus, showing a slender build and modern postcranial anatomy. Homo erectus is also associated with a significant technological leap, the development of the Acheulean tool industry. Acheulean tools, which appeared around 1.7 ma, are characterized by their large, bifacially flaked hand axes and cleavers. 
These tools represent a considerable advancement over the earlier Oldowan tools, indicating greater skill and planning in their production. The Acheulean toolkit allowed Homo erectus to perform a wider range of tasks, including butchering large animals, processing plant materials, and perhaps even constructing shelters. One of the most important aspects of Homo erectus's behavior is its use of fire. Evidence from sites such as Swartkrans in South Africa, dating to around 1.5 ma, suggests that Homo erectus was the first hominin to control fire. The use of fire would have provided numerous advantages, including warmth, protection from predators, and the ability to cook food. Cooking would have made food easier to digest and more nutritious, supporting the dietary needs of a larger brain and more complex social behaviors. Homo erectus was also the first hominin species to migrate out of Africa, reaching parts of Asia and possibly Europe. This wide geographic distribution is a testament to the species' adaptability and ability to thrive in a variety of environments. In Asia, Homo erectus sites have been found in Indonesia, China, and the Caucasus region. The Dmanasai site in Georgia, dated to around 1.8 ma, provides some of the earliest evidence of Homo erectus outside of Africa, with fossils showing a mix of primitive and advanced traits. The spread of Homo erectus beyond Africa represents a significant milestone in human evolution, highlighting the species' ability to explore and colonize new territories. This migration out of Africa was facilitated by several factors, including the species' advanced cognitive abilities, efficient bipedal locomotion, and the use of tools and fire. The ability to adapt to different environments and exploit a wide range of resources would have been crucial for the survival and success of Homo erectus in new and challenging landscapes. Homo erectus also exhibited a range of social behaviors that likely contributed to its evolutionary success. The development of more complex tools and the use of fire suggest a high degree of cooperation and social learning. These behaviors would have facilitated the sharing of knowledge and skills within groups, supporting the transmission of cultural practices across generations. The social structure of Homo erectus likely involved coordinated group activities, such as hunting and food sharing, which would have strengthened social bonds and improved group survival. The study of Homo erectus continues to provide valuable insights into the evolution of the genus Homo. The species' combination of advanced cognitive abilities, sophisticated tool use, and wide geographic distribution highlights the complex interplay between biology, behavior, and environment in human evolution. The evolutionary success of Homo erectus set the stage for the emergence of later Homo species, including Homo sapiens, and underscores the importance of adaptability and innovation in our evolutionary history. In conclusion, Homo erectus is a pivotal species in the study of human evolution, representing a major step forward in cognitive abilities, tool use, and geographic expansion. The species' larger brain size, efficient bipedal locomotion, and advanced toolmaking skills highlight its evolutionary advancements over earlier hominins. The use of fire and the migration out of Africa demonstrate the adaptability and innovative capabilities of Homo erectus. The study of this species continues to shed light on the complex processes that shape the evolution of the genus Homo, emphasizing the importance of technological and social innovations in our ancient ancestors. Part 8. Homo erectus adaptations and spread. Homo erectus is a landmark species in human evolution, not only for its physical and cognitive advancements but also for its remarkable adaptability and expansive geographic spread. The species' ability to thrive in diverse environments and its pioneering migration out of Africa provide crucial insights into the evolutionary processes that shaped early human history. One of the key adaptations of Homo erectus was its efficient bipedal locomotion. The species' long legs, narrow hips, and human-like feet allowed for more efficient walking and running compared to earlier hominins. These adaptations would have been advantageous for a nomadic lifestyle, enabling Homo erectus to cover long distances in search of food and resources. The Turkana boy skeleton, 
discovered in Kenya and dated to around 1.6 million years ago, Ma, exemplifies these features, showing a nearly modern postcranial anatomy that supports endurance running and long-distance travel. The cognitive advancements of Homo erectus are also evident in its use of more sophisticated tools. The Acheulean tool industry, associated with Homo erectus, represents a significant technological leap from the earlier Oldowan tools. Acheulean tools, including bifacial hand axes and cleavers, required greater skill and planning to produce. These tools were used for a variety of tasks, from butchering large animals to processing plant materials, reflecting the species' versatile and innovative approach to survival. The use of fire is another crucial adaptation associated with Homo erectus. Evidence from sites such as Swartkrans in South Africa, dated to around 1.5 ma, suggests that Homo erectus was the first hominin to control fire. The ability to use fire would have provided numerous benefits, including warmth, protection from predators, and the ability to cook food. Cooking food not only made it easier to chew and digest but also unlocked more nutrients, supporting the dietary needs of a larger brain and more complex social behaviors. The control of fire represents a major technological and cognitive milestone in human evolution. Homo erectus was also the first hominin species to migrate out of Africa, marking a significant expansion in the geographic range of early humans. This migration, which began around 1.8 ma, saw Homo erectus spreading into parts of Asia and possibly Europe. The Dmanasai site in Georgia, dated to around 1.8 ma, provides some of the earliest evidence of Homo erectus outside of Africa. Fossils from this site show a mix of primitive and advanced traits, indicating that early populations of Homo erectus were still undergoing significant evolutionary changes. In Asia, Homo erectus sites have been found in Indonesia, China, and the Caucasus region. The species' presence in these diverse regions highlights its adaptability to different environments. In Indonesia, the discovery of Homo erectus fossils at sites such as Sangaran and Gandong provides evidence of the species' long-term occupation of Southeast Asia. In China, sites such as Zucudian have yielded numerous Homo erectus fossils, offering insights into the species' behavior and adaptation to colder climates. The spread of Homo erectus beyond Africa was facilitated by several factors, including its advanced cognitive abilities, efficient bipedal locomotion, and use of tools and fire. These adaptations allowed Homo erectus to exploit a wide range of resources and thrive in different environments. The species' ability to adapt to new and challenging landscapes underscores the importance of flexibility and innovation in human evolution. Homo erectus also exhibited a range of social behaviors that likely contributed to its evolutionary success. The development of more complex tools and the use of fire suggest a high degree of cooperation and social learning. These behaviors would have facilitated the sharing of knowledge and skills within groups, supporting the transmission of cultural practices across generations. The social structure of Homo erectus likely involved coordinated group activities, such as hunting and food sharing, which would have strengthened social bonds and improved group survival. The study of Homo erectus continues to provide valuable insights into the evolution of the genus Homo. The species' combination of advanced cognitive abilities, sophisticated tool use, and wide geographic distribution highlights the complex interplay between biology, behavior, and environment in human evolution. The evolutionary success of Homo erectus set the stage for the emergence of later Homo species, including Homo sapiens, and underscores the importance of adaptability and innovation in our evolutionary history. In summary, Homo erectus is a pivotal species in the study of human evolution, representing a major step forward in cognitive abilities, tool use, and geographic expansion. The species' larger brain size, efficient bipedal locomotion, and advanced toolmaking skills highlight its evolutionary advancements over earlier hominins. The use of fire and the migration out of Africa demonstrate the adaptability and innovative capabilities of Homo erectus. 
The study of this species continues to shed light on the complex processes that shape the evolution of the genus Homo, emphasizing the importance of technological and social innovations in our ancient ancestors. Part 9, Early Human Occupation of Europe The early human occupation of Europe marks a significant chapter in the story of human evolution, characterized by the migration and adaptation of hominins to new and challenging environments. The presence of early humans in Europe, dating back to approximately 1.4 million years ago, Ma, provides valuable insights into the behavior, technology, and survival strategies of our ancient ancestors. One of the earliest known human species to occupy Europe is Homo antecessor, discovered at the site of Grandalina in the Ataperca region of Spain. Dated to around 0.8 Ma, Homo antecessor exhibits a mix of primitive and advanced traits, reflecting its transitional status between earlier hominins and later European populations. The fossils from Grandalina include both cranial and postcranial remains, indicating that Homo antecessor had a relatively modern body plan, with a larger brain and more human like facial features compared to earlier species. The Grand Alina site has also yielded evidence of early human behavior, including the use of stone tools and the consumption of animal meat. The presence of butchered animal bones suggests that Homo antecessor engaged in hunting or scavenging activities, using tools to process meat. This dietary shift towards greater meat consumption would have provided important nutritional benefits, supporting brain growth and overall health. The stone tools found at Grand Alina belong to the Acheulean industry, characterized by large bifacial hand axes and cleavers, indicating advanced toolmaking skills and cognitive abilities. The discovery of Homo antecessor and other early human fossils in Europe highlights the complexity and diversity of human evolution. These early Europeans exhibited a range of physical and behavioral adaptations that allowed them to survive in the varied environments of Pleistocene Europe. The ability to adapt to different climates and landscapes, from temperate forests to colder regions, underscores the importance of flexibility and innovation in human evolution. The presence of Homo antecessor in Europe raises important questions about the migration and interaction of early human populations. Some researchers suggest that Homo antecessor may represent an ancestral population that gave rise to later European hominins, such as the Neanderthals. Others propose that Homo antecessor and other early Europeans were part of a complex web of migrations and interactions involving multiple hominin species. The genetic and fossil evidence from this period continues to be a topic of active research and debate, offering new insights into the dynamic and interconnected nature of human evolution. Following Homo antecessor, the fossil record indicates the presence of other archaic human species in Europe. One of the most well-known is Homo heidelbergensis, which lived between approximately 600,000 and 200,000 years ago. Homo heidelbergensis is characterized by its large brain, robust build, and advanced toolmaking abilities. Fossils of this species have been found at several sites across Europe, including Maurer in Germany and Boxgrove in the United Kingdom. Homo heidelbergensis exhibited a range of behaviors that suggest a high degree of social complexity and cooperation. The presence of wooden spears and other hunting tools indicates that this species engaged in coordinated hunting activities, likely involving group cooperation and communication. The use of fire and the construction of shelters provide further evidence of their ability to adapt to different environments and climates. These behaviors reflect the cognitive and social advancements that characterized the evolution of later Homo species. The study of early human occupation in Europe also involves examining the environmental and climatic conditions that influenced human migration and adaptation. During the Pleistocene epoch, Europe experienced significant climatic fluctuations, including periods of glaciation and interglacial warmth. These changes would have affected the availability of resources and the habitats occupied by early humans, requiring them to develop new strategies for survival. One of the key factors influencing human adaptation in Europe was the ability to exploit a diverse range of food resources. 
Early humans in Europe would have relied on a combination of hunting, scavenging, and gathering plant materials to meet their nutritional needs. The development of advanced tools and technologies, such as the Acheulean and later Mousterian industries, facilitated the efficient processing of these resources, supporting larger and more complex populations. The interaction between early human populations and other species, including large mammals, also played a significant role in shaping the human presence in Europe. The coexistence of humans with predators and competitors would have required strategic planning and cooperation to secure resources and ensure group survival. The study of animal remains and other archaeological evidence provides important insights into these interactions and the ecological dynamics of early human communities. The early human occupation of Europe represents a crucial period in the history of human evolution, marked by significant advancements in technology, behavior, and adaptation. The presence of species such as Homo antecessor and Homo heidelbergensis highlights the diversity and complexity of human evolution, reflecting the interplay between biology, environment, and culture. The continued study of early European fossils and archaeological sites offers valuable insights into the processes that shape the development of modern humans and our ancient ancestors. In summary, the early human occupation of Europe is a significant chapter in the story of human evolution, characterized by the migration and adaptation of hominins to new and challenging environments. The presence of species such as Homo antecessor and Homo heidelbergensis highlights the diversity and complexity of early human populations, reflecting their ability to adapt to different climates and landscapes. The study of early European fossils and archaeological sites continues to provide valuable insights into the behavior, technology, and survival strategies of our ancient ancestors, emphasizing the importance of flexibility and innovation in human evolution. Part 10 – Archaic Homo sapiens The term Archaic Homo sapiens refers to early forms of our own species that lived between approximately 500,000 and 200,000 years ago. These early humans exhibited a range of physical and behavioral traits that were both similar to and distinct from modern Homo sapiens. The study of archaic Homo sapiens provides valuable insights into the evolutionary processes that led to the emergence of modern humans and the complex interplay between biology, behavior, and environment in human evolution. One of the key characteristics of archaic Homo sapiens is their larger brain size compared to earlier hominins. The cranial capacity of archaic Homo sapiens ranged from about 1,200 to 1,400 cubic centimeters, approaching the size of modern human brains. This increase in brain size is associated with more advanced cognitive abilities, including improved problem-solving skills, greater social complexity, and the development of more sophisticated tools and technologies. Archaic Homo sapiens exhibited a range of physical features that distinguished them from both earlier hominins and modern humans. These features include a robust build, with thick bones and strong muscles, and a pronounced brow ridge. The face of Archaic Homo sapiens was also different from that of modern humans, with a larger, more projecting midface and a lack of a prominent chin. Despite these differences, the overall morphology of archaic Homo sapiens shows a clear trend towards modern human anatomy, reflecting the gradual and mosaic nature of human evolution. The technological advancements of archaic Homo sapiens are evident in their use of more complex tools and the development of new technologies. The Acheulean tool industry, which began with Homo erectus, continued to be used by archaic Homo sapiens, but they also developed the Levalois technique, a more sophisticated method of flake production. The Levalois technique allowed for the creation of more uniform and efficient tools, reflecting advanced cognitive abilities and planning skills. Archaic Homo sapiens also exhibited a range of behaviors that suggest a high degree of social complexity and cooperation. The construction of shelters, the use of fire, and the development of hunting strategies involving the coordinated efforts of group members all indicate advanced social behaviors. 
The ability to build shelters and control fire would have provided significant advantages in terms of protection from predators and harsh environmental conditions, as well as improving food processing and nutrition. One of the most significant aspects of archaic Homo sapiens behavior is their burial practices. Evidence from sites such as Ataperca in Spain and Cima de los Husos suggests that archaic Homo sapiens engaged in the deliberate burial of their dead. These burial practices reflect a level of symbolic thinking and social organization that is characteristic of modern humans. The presence of grave goods and the careful arrangement of bodies suggest that archaic Homo sapiens may have had beliefs about the afterlife and engaged in ritualistic behaviors. The geographic distribution of archaic Homo sapiens was widespread, with fossils found in Africa, Europe, and Asia. This wide distribution indicates that archaic Homo sapiens were highly adaptable and capable of thriving in a variety of environments. In Europe, archaic Homo sapiens are often referred to as Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, while in Africa, they are generally classified as early or archaic Homo sapiens. The relationship between these different populations and the extent of their interactions remains a topic of active research and debate. The study of archaic Homo sapiens also involves examining the environmental and climatic conditions that influence their evolution and behavior. During the Pleistocene epoch, the Earth experienced significant climatic fluctuations, including periods of glaciation and interglacial warmth. These changes would have affected the availability of resources and the habitats occupied by archaic Homo sapiens, requiring them to develop new strategies for survival. The interaction between archaic Homo sapiens and other species, including large mammals and other hominins, played a significant role in shaping their evolution. The coexistence of archaic Homo sapiens with predators and competitors would have required strategic planning and cooperation to secure resources and ensure group survival. The study of animal remains and other archaeological evidence provides important insights into these interactions and the ecological dynamics of early human communities. One of the most important aspects of archaic Homo sapiens evolution is their eventual transition to modern Homo sapiens. This transition is characterized by a series of anatomical and behavioral changes that reflect the gradual development of modern human traits. The fossil record shows a mosaic pattern of evolution, with different features evolving at different rates in response to changing environmental pressures and cultural innovations. The genetic evidence also provides crucial insights into the relationship between archaic and modern Homo sapiens. Studies of ancient DNA have revealed that there was interbreeding between archaic Homo sapiens, such as Neanderthals, and modern humans. This genetic exchange has left a lasting legacy in the genomes of contemporary human populations, highlighting the complex and interconnected nature of human evolution. In conclusion, archaic Homo sapiens represent a crucial stage in the evolution of our species, characterized by significant advancements in brain size, tool use, and social behaviors. The study of these early humans provides valuable insights into the processes that led to the emergence of modern Homo sapiens and the complex interplay between biology, behavior, and environment in human evolution. The combination of physical and behavioral traits exhibited by archaic Homo sapiens reflects the gradual and mosaic nature of human evolution, emphasizing the importance of adaptability and innovation in our ancient ancestors. The continued study of archaic Homo sapiens fossils and archaeological sites offers valuable insights into the evolutionary history of our species and the dynamic processes that shape the development of modern humans. Conclusion In conclusion, the journey of human evolution is a rich tapestry woven from the threads of adaptation, innovation, and survival. From the early bipedalism of Australopithecus afarensis to the technological advancements of Homo erectus, each step reveals significant milestones in our development. The use of tools, control of fire, and eventual migration out of Africa underscore the remarkable adaptability and ingenuity of our ancestors. Studying archaic Homo sapiens and their interactions with other species highlights the complexity and interconnectedness of our evolutionary history. 
Ultimately, this exploration underscores the importance of adaptability and innovation in shaping the path to modern humanity, reminding us of our deep and shared roots in the ancient past. Lesson learned. Human evolution is not just a scientific narrative of biological change over millions of years, it is a profound exploration of who we are, where we came from, and how we have adapted and thrived in diverse environments. From the early ancestors who first walked upright in Africa to the spread of Homo sapiens across the globe, the study of human evolution offers valuable lessons that extend beyond biology to encompass anthropology, sociology, and even philosophy. Here, we delve into some of the key lessons learned from the journey of human evolution. 1. Adaptability and Resilience one of the most striking lessons from human evolution is the adaptability and resilience of our ancestors. Over millions of years, different species of hominins faced numerous environmental challenges, from shifting climates to competition with other species. Each challenge required adaptive responses, whether through changes in diet, the development of new tools, or the ability to migrate to new territories. For instance, the transition from arboreal to terrestrial life by Australopithecus species like Australopithecus afarensis demonstrates the adaptability to a more open savanna environment. Later, Homo erectus's ability to control fire and construct shelters enabled them to survive in a variety of habitats, from tropical forests to colder climates. The ability to adapt and innovate in response to environmental pressures was crucial not only for survival but also for the eventual success of Homo sapiens. 2. Bipedalism and its consequences. The evolution of bipedalism, or walking upright on two legs, was a pivotal development in human evolution with far-reaching consequences. It freed our hands for carrying objects and manipulating tools, which facilitated the development of complex tool use and eventually led to the evolution of larger brains. Bipedalism also enabled early hominins to cover long distances efficiently, contributing to their ability to migrate and colonize new habitats. However, bipedalism also brought challenges. The shift from quadrupedal to bipedal locomotion required changes in skeletal structure, such as modifications to the pelvis, spine, and feet. These adaptations were not without trade-offs, as they made early hominins vulnerable to certain types of injuries and childbirth complications. Nonetheless, bipedalism remains a defining feature of human evolution and underscores the evolutionary principle of adaptation through selective pressures. 3. Tool Use and Technological Innovation The development and use of tools represent a hallmark of human evolution, reflecting our capacity for innovation and problem-solving. The Olduin stone tools, associated with early Homo species like Homo habilis, represent some of the earliest evidence of tool use around 2.6 million years ago. These simple tools were used for tasks such as cutting meat, processing plants, and possibly even modifying materials for other uses. Subsequent technological advancements, such as the Acheulean hand axes associated with Homo erectus, demonstrate an increased sophistication in tool manufacture and use. The Acheulean toolkit includes hand axes, cleavers, and other bifacial tools that were crafted through a more refined technique involving the shaping of large flakes. These tools were likely used for a wider range of activities, including hunting, butchering, and woodworking. The ability to create and use tools not only enhanced early humans' efficiency in obtaining food and resources but also fostered cultural transmission and social interaction. Tool use required cognitive abilities such as planning, foresight, and the ability to teach and learn from others. The study of tool use in human evolution underscores the importance of technological innovation in shaping our evolutionary trajectory and cultural development. Four, Social complexity and cooperation. Human evolution is marked by increasing levels of social complexity and cooperation among individuals. Early hominins lived in social groups characterized by cooperative behaviors such as hunting, gathering, childcare, and defense against predators. The ability to work together and share resources provided selective advantages, contributing to the survival and reproductive success of individuals within the group. 
Evidence from archaeological sites, such as burial practices and the presence of symbolic artifacts, suggests that early hominins had complex social structures and possibly even symbolic communication. The deliberate burial of the dead, as seen in sites like Shanidar Cave in Iraq and Kafsa Cave in Israel, indicates a recognition of death and possibly spiritual beliefs or rituals associated with mortality. The development of language and symbolic thought further facilitated cooperation and communication among early humans. Language allowed for the transmission of knowledge, the coordination of group activities, and the development of cultural traditions. The emergence of complex societies and cultural diversity can be traced back to the social dynamics and cooperative behaviors observed in early hominin groups. 5. Cognitive Evolution and Brain Development the evolution of the human brain is a central aspect of human evolution, reflecting changes in cognition, behavior, and technological innovation. Over millions of years, hominins experienced significant increases in brain size and complexity, culminating in the large, highly encephalized brains of Homo sapiens. The expansion of the brain allowed for enhanced cognitive abilities, such as problem solving, abstract thinking, and language use. The study of brain evolution in hominins reveals a complex interplay between genetic, environmental, and cultural factors. For example, the consumption of nutrient-rich diets and the development of cooking techniques may have provided the energy necessary to support brain growth. Social interactions, tool use, and language likely played crucial roles in shaping cognitive abilities and brain development over time. Comparative studies of fossil hominin skulls, endocasts, and modern human brains provide insights into the evolutionary changes in brain size and organization. The Neanderthal brain, for instance, was larger than that of modern humans on average, suggesting comparable cognitive abilities and possibly different cognitive strengths. Understanding brain evolution enhances our understanding of the cognitive capacities that distinguish humans from other species and the factors that contributed to our evolutionary success. 6. Cultural Evolution and Innovation Human evolution is not solely driven by biological changes but also by cultural evolution, encompassing the transmission of knowledge, beliefs, and behaviors through social learning and imitation. The development of cultural innovations, such as language, art, and symbolic thought, played a critical role in shaping human societies and facilitating adaptation to diverse environments. Artifacts such as cave paintings, engraved bones, and decorative items provide insights into the symbolic and expressive capacities of early humans. These artifacts suggest an awareness of aesthetics, spirituality, and social identity, indicating the presence of complex cultural traditions and belief systems. The transmission of cultural knowledge allowed for the accumulation of knowledge over generations, contributing to the development of increasingly sophisticated technologies and social structures. Cultural evolution also enabled humans to adapt rapidly to changing environmental conditions and expand into new territories. The ability to innovate and adapt culturally provided selective advantages, complementing biological adaptations in the process of human evolution. The study of cultural evolution emphasizes the importance of cultural diversity, creativity, and social learning in shaping human societies and evolutionary trajectories. 7. Migration and Global Dispersal the global dispersal of Homo sapiens is a testament to the adaptability, innovation, and resilience of our species. Homo sapiens originated in Africa approximately 200,000 years ago and subsequently spread across continents, reaching Asia, Europe, Australia, and the Americas. The peopling of the world involved complex migration routes, environmental adaptations, and interactions with other hominin species. Genetic and archaeological evidence indicates multiple waves of human migration out of Africa, each characterized by unique environmental challenges and opportunities. For example, the colonization of Eurasia during the Paleolithic era required adaptations to colder climates, the development of new tool technologies, e.g., the Middle Paleolithic Mysterian industry, and the exploitation of diverse ecological resources. 
The study of human migration patterns provides insights into the genetic diversity, cultural exchanges, and adaptive strategies that shape the global distribution of Homo sapiens. Interactions with Neanderthals and Denisovans in Eurasia, for instance, resulted in interbreeding events that left genetic legacies in modern human populations today. The dispersal of Homo sapiens highlights the dynamic nature of human evolution and the ability to thrive in diverse environments through cultural and biological adaptations. 8. Ethical and Philosophical Reflections Beyond its scientific implications, the study of human evolution raises important ethical and philosophical questions about our place in the natural world, our relationship with other species, and our responsibilities towards the environment. Understanding our evolutionary history challenges us to confront biases, prejudices, and misconceptions about human diversity and our shared ancestry. The recognition of our common evolutionary heritage with other living organisms underscores the interconnectedness of life on Earth and the importance of biodiversity conservation. Human activities, such as habitat destruction, climate change, and overexploitation of resources, pose threats to ecosystems and species diversity, including our closest living relatives, the great apes. Furthermore, the study of human evolution encourages reflection on the nature of human nature itself, what it means to be human, the origins of morality and ethics, and the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. By exploring our evolutionary past, we gain insights into the universality of human experiences, the diversity of cultural expressions, and the potential for cooperation and conflict in human societies. Conclusion In conclusion, the study of human evolution offers profound insights into the biological, cognitive, cultural, and social dimensions of our species' history. From the adaptation of bipedalism to the development of complex tool use, from the evolution of social behaviors to the global dispersal of Homo sapiens, each aspect of human evolution reveals lessons about resilience, innovation, cooperation, and adaptation. Understanding human evolution challenges us to appreciate the diversity of human experiences, the interconnectedness of life on Earth, and the ethical responsibilities we have towards future generations and the planet. By learning from our evolutionary past, we can better understand the challenges facing humanity today and work towards a more sustainable and inclusive future for all.